Hello and welcome back. Today is lecture 6-1 on topological path planning. In my opinion, this is the easiest path planning to implement in software. However, there is a caveat. Because it's topological path planning, it depends heavily on odometry data as well as sensor data. And as we all know, sensor data and odometry are prone to error. So your challenge with topological path planning is using this limited, incomplete information that is error prone, try to design the best path planner to plan out the robot's next steps. The objectives of today's lecture are to define representation as it applies to path planning, to define configuration space, as well as topological navigation in more details, a couple of different ways to do that, how to represent a world by using roadmaps as well as cell decomposition. There are three of those, exact, approximate, and adaptive. In addition, we will also discuss two types of formal exploration strategies. Representation. The key to topological path pl planning is recognizing distinctive places in the world in order to make navigation decisions. Therefore, representation is integral to this process. Representation is what does the robot know and keep in its brain? Representation is the form in which information is stored or encoded in the robot. The robot may need to remember what happened in the past or predict what will happen in the future. The robot may also need to store maps of the environment, images of people or places. The map is the most commonly used model of a world model. The robot may use an odometric path to recall the route traveled. The robot may use a landmark-based path using salient features of the environment. The, may, the robot may use a landmark-based map which tells the robot what to do at each landmark regardless of order. A collection of landmarks with links is called a topological map. The robot may recall a maze by drawing it by using exact lengths of corridors and distances to walls. This is a metric map. And there's also a discrete version of that, which we call a metric grid. Map categories. The odometric map is only useful if the world does not change and the robot is able to accurately keep track of distances and turns. The landmark based map does not require the robot to be accurate, but the world still cannot change. The fully metric map is the most complicated and most useful because the robot has to take any measurements and store more information. Other types of representations. Self. The robot must have some representation of itself, which is called proprioception, which we've talked about before, such as what are its limitations, how big or small is it, what are its goals, what sensors does it have, what are its plans, what are its intentions, does it have a gripper or no gripper, etc. It also should have a representation of the environment, such as what are navigable spaces, what are the existing structures, and what are the maps does it have about the environment? There should also be objects such as, are there people in the room? How many doors? Where are other robots? And other detectable things in the world that may be important to the, roles, the robot's goals or tasks. And actions. What are the outcomes of specific actions in the environment? What happens when the robot pushes this box? Or what happens when the robot goes to this door? And finally, the task. What needs to be done? where and in what order and how fast. Global path planning. The robot's environment representation can range from a continuous geometric description to a decomposition-based geometric map or a topological map. The assumption we make is that there exists a good enough map of the environment for the robot to navigate. There are general strategies for decomposition. Road map, which identifies a set of routes within the free space. Cell decomposition, which discriminates between free and occupied cells. Potential field, which is, imposes a mathematical function over the space. We've talked about potential fields before. Metric path planning or quantitative navigation is the use of metric methods to produce an optimal path to a spe specified goal. Metric paths decompose a path into sub goals or waypoints instead of landmarks or gateways like topological navigation. And metric path planners have two components, representation and the algorithm. Representation stores the world as salient features or navigationally relevant objects, and this is called the configuration space. 
A configuration space or C space transforms three-dimensional space to two-dimensional space suitable for robots that is a simplifying assumption. It is more amenable for storage in a computer and for rapid execution of algorithms. In this class, we also use matrices a lot to, sh to store maps as well. There are several types of C-space representations, including Voronoi diagrams, regular grids, quad trees or octrees, vertex graphs, and hybrid free space. Full knowledge path planning. There are several C spaces that afford topological navigation. These C spaces are visibility graphs, exact free space, Voronoi diagrams, and approximate free space. There are four examples of these shown here.